Good morning everyone. So we are the group 7. Uh, our topic for today is all about the Philippine Republics. So in chapter 8, we have the third and fourth Republic of the Philippines. So uh, we will tackle about the first one is the administration of Manuel Rojas. Second, the administration of LP Quirino and the third is the administration of Ramon Magsaysay and last the administration of Carlos Garcia and Justado Macapagal. And in chapter 9 we have the Fifth Republic Part 1. So uh, we have uh, the administration of Ferdinand E. Marcos, the martial law period, the 1973 constitution, the parliamentary form of government, the 1986 People Power or the EDSA Revolution and the administration of Corazon Aquino. Lastly, the provisional government and the provisional constitution. So, why do we need to uh, study these uh, republics? So, uh, the purpose of stu studying these uh, administrations is um, we will know or we will gain a infor lot of information and new ideas uh, from the past. Uh, in, this, in this lesson, uh, I hope that you will learn something new and um, you will know about uh, how our presidents um, how our presidents uh, rule and uh, fight for our independence here in the Philippines. Now, let's discuss the administration of Manuel Rojas. So, as we know that Manuel Rojas is the fifth president of the Philippines. He is also called the third uh, president of the Republic of the Philippines in 1946 to 1948 so i have here the speech of manuel rojas it's stated that if war should come i am certain of one thing probably the only thing of which i can be certain and it is this that america and the philippines will be found on the same side that American and Filipino soldiers will again fight side by side in the same trenches or in air or at in sea in the defense of justice, freedom, and other principles which we both love and cherish. So, yung speech na ito is matatalakay natin in the uh, next lesson kasi we know uh, that uh, during his presidency is um, sinakop tayo ng mga uh, American. So, uh, ito ay ginawa niya itong speech noong uh, malapit na siyang mamatay uh, dahil sa kanyang sakit. So, this is the biography of Manuel Rojas. So, siya ay ipinanganak sa Capiz. Ngayon, tinatawag na itong Rojas City. He studied law at UP and graduated with honors in 1913. So, in the same year, he topped bar examination and was employed as private secretary to Chief Justice Cayetano Arellano. So, uh, Siyempre, nag-aral siya ng law at noong 1915 to 1916 ay nagturo siya ng law sa isang universidad. Nung na-appoint siya as a member of the Capiz Municipal Council, uh, dito na nagsimula ang kakaroon niya ng experience about sa politika. Then, uh, noong 1919, he is elected as governor of Capiz. Uh, elect siya mismo sa kanilang lugar. As his way to uh, call the attention of people, syempre, uunahin niya muna yung kanilang lugar na 
i-improve before siya magpapataas then hanggang sa magiging president na siya. Then, noong 1922, he is elected as congressman and become house speaker. And noong 1935 naman is, he was chosen as the delegate to the Constitutional Convention. Uh, naging secretary siya uh, of finance noong, noong 1941. Ito na yung, he is elected as senator and become senate president. So, sabi ko nga, Unti-unting nagpapataas siya, parang step by step yung ginawa niya hanggang sa makuha yung loob ng mga mamamayan. So, ito naman yung uh, conditions of the Philippines. Nai-elect na siya or naging presidente na siya dito sa Pilipinas. So, when Manuel Rojas started his term, As a first president of the Third Republic of the Philippines, the Second War II just ended. So, this is uh, the World War is between the American and Filipino people. Siyempre, noong sinasakop kasi tayo ng mga Americans, is maraming mga trahedya or yung mga problema, challenges ang kinakaharap ng ating bansa. Una na dito yung uh, commerce was experiencing recession. Siyempre, na-experience natin ito kasi uh, because of the farms and factories were ruined. Uh, nasira na lahat ng ating mga kagamitan, uh, mga lupain na pinagtataniman natin ng mga iba't ibang produkto natin. Pangalawa is the transportation efficiency. So, It was down due to the bomb roads and bridges. So, dahil sa mga lab, dahil sa labanan na nangyari between the American and the Filipinos, uh, American bombarded uh, every places here in the Philippines. Places are burnt down. It means that Filipinos are not able to live secure and safe because of this war uh, they are their towns and cities were burnt down then according to my research 80% of school building were ruined alam naman natin na kapag war talaga is so madugo yung labanan na yan so hindi lang uh, mga lupain or yung mga buildings yung mga transportation ang naapektuhan kundi pati na din yung pamumuhay at mismong buhay ng isang uh, mamamayang Pilipino. So, 90% is syempre we are expecting that education is now decreasing because uh, it is stated that 80% of school building were ruined. Then, lastly is the crime rate. Before, during, and after the war, maraming mga mamamayan ang naapektuhan. Uh, one example of this is, familiar kayo doon sa mga sinasakop nga tayo ng ibang uh, bansa din, uh, kinagahasa yung mga kababaihan. Siyempre, alam naman natin na yung mga kababaihan is, wala silang kakayahang ipaglaban ang kanilang sarili. Then, ito na nga, mga abuso na yung mga Americans sa atin. Then, hindi lang sa pagpatay, kundi marami pang mga krimen ang nangyari. So, ito yung tinatawag nilang American Gangster. So, kung babalik tayo dun sa speech na binasa ko kanina, it is stated that kahit saan man tayo magpunta is, nandyan pa rin yung alitan ng America versus Uh, the Philippines, but uh, for the security and uh, the safetyness of each country, ayun na nga, kinakailangan ng peace, peace talk, or yung kinakailangan nilang uh, usap yung every president at uh, itigil na yung alitan nila. Pero hindi hindi naging madali yun kasi sinakop nga tayo ng 
American. So, matagal pa bago nangyari yun before. The Philippines had independence in American. Then, uh, let's proceed to the primary problems during Manuel Rojas' administration. So, number one problem is the economy is struggling. It is because of low outputs and uh, high unemployment rates. Then, syempre, is maraming mga nasira. Uh, kaya, talagang uh, bababa talaga yung ekonomiya ng ating bansa. Then, yung unemployment rate is rising. Paano ka makapagtrabaho ng mabuti kung may digmaan, di ba? Kaya, ayun na nga, maraming mga nawalan ng trabaho, maraming tumigil sa kanilang mga trabaho upang lumaban or uh, isecure ang kanilang pamilya at ilayo doon sa labanan. Kaya, unemployment or yung mga trabaho dito sa Pilipinas is now decreasing. Then, the production become low. Siyempre, is sabi ko nga kanina na uh, American bombarded every land. Kaya, yung production natin is mababa na. Wala nang mga mamamayan ang nagtatrabaho. Kaya, yung products natin is uh, decreasing din. Then, the education severely weakened. Siyempre, is sabi ko nga, eh, connected din kanina na 80% of school buildings are ruined. Kaya asahan mong uh, walang mga estudyante or mag-aral ang pumapasok sa eskwelahan kasi nasira yung kanilang mga pinag-aaralan or yung paaralan nila. So, this means that uh, sa yung apat na ito is connected to each other kasi naman uh, mas lalo nang naapektuhan yung uh, ekonomiya ng ating bansa. Here, um, yung mga US officials pa rin yung uh, namamahala sa ating um, sa ating lugar or dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya, unti-unti uh, nang unti-unti nang bumabagsak ang uh, kaunlaran dito sa ating bansa. Then, we will now moving on to the promise, promises during the elections and inaugurations. So, in here, uh, bago maging president or bago iboto ng mga mamamayan, si Manuel Rojas is, syempre, para uh, maging magaan tapos ma ma encourage yung mga ma encourage yung mga mamamayan iboto siya is may mga promises siya during the election so he stated that he wants to concentrate on production economically second one is he wants on income from export to buy machines hire technically skilled people and buy foods Then, he wants to revive the production. Yung pr product na ito is, for example, is the rice, sugar, coconuts, uh, coconut oil, tobacco, gold, chrome, lumber, and etc. Then, for employment, employment, he wants to give encouragement to Filipinos to participate in the new economy. So, ito yung mga ipinangako niya during the election. Then, uh, we have also here the foundation stone of national rehabilitation that can be achieved by feeding the hungry, healing the sick, caring for widows and orphans, waging war against inflation and unemployment. So, sa feeding the hungry, syempre, is uh, wala nang 
wala nang... Siyempre, dito is kinakailangan mo nang isolve yung problema dito sa ating bansa noong uh, kasagsagan ng labanan. Maraming mga nagugutom, maraming mga pamilya yung nawalan ng bahay, marami sa kanila ang uh, nagkasakit. Tapos, siyempre, hindi sila pwedeng pumunta sa ospital kasi delikado nga. Then, maraming mga namatayan as we know or yung mga batang naging uh, or yung mga batang wala ng mga magulang. Then, yung lastly, yung inflation at unemployment. Uh, ito yung mga foundation na uh, dapat nilang matugunan kung siya man ay tatayo bilang presidente ng Pilipinas. So, it is stated here that a new tenancy law will take effect and usury will be halted. Lands will be purchased by the government and resold to tenants. New agricultural areas method of agriculture will be taught. It is his aim to raise the status of the farm worker to increase his earnings, to spread wide the benefits of modern technology. So, ito yung he stated, Manuel Rojas stated this um, noong 1946. So, sabi niya na uh, so, sabi niya na uh, ito yung mga ip- Diba, nagpangako nga siya na uh, i-improve niya ang uh, economic status ng ating bansa. Then, uh, dito din uh, magkakaroon ng, muling magkakaroon ng trabaho yung mga mamamayan na nawalan ng trabaho noon. Then, uh, in, syempre is uh, na, upang lalong palaguin yung ekonomiya ng ating bansa uh, through the use of the benefits of the modern technology. So, this is the laws and programs na isinagawa niya noong siya na ay nasa tumayo bilang presidente ng Pilipinas. So, noong 1946, the U.S. Congress offered $800 million as rehabilitation money in exchange for the ratification of the Bill Trade Act. So, syempre, is na, uh, na, naging maayos na yung um, interaction between the American and the Philippines. So, parang naging friendly na sila sa isa't isa kasi nga uh, may peace and order na nang naganap. So, this means that yung 800 million dollars is parang uh, in exchange uh, exchange money dito sa Pilipinas para doon sa Belt Trade Act. Yung Belt Trade Act is mapapag-aralan natin yan uh, mamaya. A curtailment of Philippines sovereignty, virtual nu- nullification of Philippines independence, as said by former President Sergio Osmeña. So, ayun na nga is unti-unti nang nagkakaroon ng independence ang ating Pilipinas or Unti-unti nang nagiging malaya ang ating Pilipinas through the, uh, sa pagsakop sa atin ng uh, mga American. Then, uh, so may dalawang uh, laws na naipasa no, sa Congress. Uh, Congress sa United States. Uh, tapos dito sa Pilipinas. Ito yung the Philippine Rehabilitation Act and the Philippine Trade Act. 
Hindi ko alam kung ano meaning nito. So, no, on August 5, 1946, Treaty of General Relation was ratified between the Philippines and the U.S. So, ito na nga, uh, noong 1946, dito na nagkakaroon ng uh, pag, uh, uh, pagkakaayos at pagkakaisa ng United States at Pilipinas. Then, noong July 4, 1946, uh, recognized the Philippine independence relinquish American sovereignty over the Philippine island. Then, noong March 14, 1947, Treaty of General Relation was signed. So, this means that the establishment of the U.S. bases was also included in this treaty. Tapos noong September 7, 1946, Manuel Rojas granted a general amnesty to guerrillas who were imprisoned during World War II. So, ito na. Uh... Then, noong January 28, General Amnesty was given to all those arrested for conniving with Japan. January 1, 1947, under the Belt Trade Act, the Parity Amendment was introduced. Then, noong March 11, 1947, it was ratified in a national plebiscite. So, meaning that Uh, it gave American citizens and corporation equal rights to Filipinos to utilize natural resources and operate public utilities. So, dito, yung uh, this year, ito na yung uh, muling unti-unti nang nagiging maunlad ang ating bansa sa tulong din ng ibang bansa sa atin. So, we, now, let's moving on to the beneficiaries of the laws and programs. The Treaty of General Relations was both beneficial for both countries, America and the Philippines. So, yung general uh, yung treaty of general relations ito na yung um, nagiging may inter interaction na sila sa isa't isa din syempre yung mga economics syempre yung mga economics nila they are exchanging uh, economic, economically uh, dito na yung mga export and import of products in other countries. Then, it is an advantage for the Philippines because their independ- independence was recognized and the Americans surrendered the rule over the country. So, ito na nga yung nagi- unti-unti nang naging independence ang ating bansa sa pamaha- pama pananakop ng mga Amerika. The military bases agreement became advantageous to the Americans because it allowed them to have as military bases in the country. So, noon pala is nagka- nagkaroon na din ng uh, military bases between American and the Philippines. So, uh, ito is Uh, itong military bases agreement, um, ito, ito na yung uh, pag uh, malaya yung mga taga-Amerika na pumunta dito 
yung mga military para sabi sa sabihin nila na pangangal pangangalagaan nila yung ditong itong bansa natin pero hindi natin alam na ayun na nga hindi natin alam na dahil dahil dito is parang ito yung opportunity or stepping stone ng mga ibang bansa upang sakupin ulit ang ating bansa. So, it is stated that um, 23 of those bases were leased for 99 years, which mean that they can leave the Philippine soil only by 2045. So, uh, according to my research is uh, may naganap na palang uh, military basis agreement noong noon hanggang ngayon at uh, dito nga uh, no, hanggang 2045 um, they are they Americans military have freedom to to enter fill, fill our country uh, then uh, general amnesty was beneficial for the people who were caught conniving living with Japan during World War II. Then, the Bell Trade Act, the inclusion for the parity amendment in the Constitution and the signing of the 1947 Military Bases Agreement. So, itong Bell Trade Act pala, ito, ito yung nangyaring uh, Military Bases Agreement. Uh, Ito ay nangyari noong 1947. And last, they were given equal rights as Filipinos to exploit the country's natural resources. So, meaning is hindi lang pala tayo yung... Uh, hindi lang pala tayo yung... Uh, Hindi lang pala tayo yung nangunguha sa sarili nating mga likas na yaman, kundi may karapatan din yung ibang bansa at tulad ng Amerika na uh, pumunta dito, then uh, manguha sa mga likas na yaman, then i-transport i nila or ex export nila sa kanilang bansa. So, meaning, uh, kaya, kaya siguro hindi uma Kaya siguro hindi umuunlad ang ating bansa kasi yung mga mostly na likas na, ya, likas na yaman natin is yung mga nagbe-benefit naman is yung mga ibang bansa. <clears throat> then, this, uh, let's move on to the holes and shortcomings of the lows. Uh, ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng Bell Trade Act? So, Bell Trade Act is the policies under this act as reiterated were mostly beneficial for America than for the Philippines. So, meaning that um, mostly na nagbe-benefit sa ating mga mostly sa ating mga likas na yaman is yung mga Amerika. rather than uh, our own country. Then the Philippine basis agreement, military basis agreement, one of the flow policies because it gave the Americans military control in the Philippines. O, yun nga sabi ko. <clears throat> ito yung mga negative impact ng dalawang programa na ito na uh, inilunsad ng Amerika tapos sa uh, Philippines. <clears throat> Siyempre, kapag uh, yung agreement nila na may military bases dito sa Pilipinas, meaning, uh, kayang-kaya nang makontrol ng, ng ibang bansa ang ating, uh, ang ating uh, bansa sa pamamigitan ng kanilang uh, mga high-tech na mga kagamitan sa 
pagipagdigmaan. So, itong negative impact na ito is naapektuhan yung And now, let's proceed to the issues and controversies. <clears throat> One criticism in Rojas' administration is his camaraderie with Americans. He was too close to them to the point that he allowed U.S. military bases in the country, turned it a trade restriction for Filipinos, and gave special privileges for U.S. property owners and inventors <clears throat> then graft and corruption didn't stop in the government scandals such as the sur surplus war property scandal school supplies scandal and chinese immigration scandal emerged during this time so ayun na nga Nan, hindi pa rin nawawala sa isang politika ang pagiging corruption. Then, the new law give parity rights to the Americans in exchange for the rehabilitation money to fix the country. People were aggravated because most of his policies were dictated by General MacArthur and Commissioner Paul McNutt. It says here that um, tinidiktahan lang nila si Manuel Rojas uh, na gawin yung kanila, na gawin or, uh, ma, or gawin yung mga programa dito sa Pilipinas or yung mga laws. Uh, in... <coughs> uh, in General MacArthur and Paul Macnat. Sila yung mga nagpupush kay Manuel Rojas upang uh, ilunsad ang mga programang ito or yung mga laws. Kasi, as we said earlier that uh, Manuel Ro Rojas is too friendly from American can uh, people or yung mga officials ng mga Americans. Kaya nga, nagpatayo sila ng <coughs> yung military bases dito sa ating country, kahit uh, hindi naman sa natutol yung mga mamamayan. Kasi, syempre is, uh, nan nandyan pa rin yung trauma, tapos natatakot sila na muling sakupin tayo ng mga Amerika. American. <clears throat> then, uh, ito na yung panghuli na he escaped an attempt murder for Eton, by Eton the Barber, Julio Gilen, who threw a grenade on the platform at Plaza Miranda after the president addressed the rally of citizens. So, <clears throat> dahil sa pamamahala ni Manuel Rojas is Maraming mga tao yung uh, may galit sa kanya. Kaya, ayun na nga, pinagpapa, pinagpapapatay ito. Nila ito. Uh, mas lalo na nung uh, nagra-rally siya. <clears throat> Then, dito na nga yung The Philippine uh, Legacy of Manuel Roas. So, alam nyo ba na si Manuel Rojas, uh, kung alam, uh, ngayong, yung pera natin ngayon na 100 pesos is uh, mukha ni Manuel Rojas ang nandito. Meaning that <coughs> the Philippine 100 peso bill. In his honor, Rojas Capis and Rojas Isabela were named after him. Due Boulevard in the city of Manila was renamed in his memory and he is currently depicted on the 100 Philippine peso bill. So for his yung mga ginawa niya dito sa Pilipinas 
kahit uh, pag-i-improvement or yung maraming naging negative impact is syempre is tatangkilikin pa rin natin siya kasi siya yung naging pangulo ng ating Pilipinas. Then, that is the end of my discussion.